Hello. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick look at how I troubleshoot the electronics in the LX200 Classic Telescope if we're, ha we're knowing we're having problems. And as you can see in this video, I have the electronics removed from the telescope, but all this can be done with the parts in the telescope. It would be just disconnecting a couple wires and going from there. Where I like to start off is to check the fuse. And if you look here, the fuse is right in the back of your front cover plate. And this fuse, the proper way to check it is to take the fuse completely out and then put it across a digital volt ohm meter. So I do have a fuse right here. And so this is how you check it. I have mine set to sound so that it, or the fuse is good. And there you can see that it's good. So now, once we have the fuse, we know it's good. We'll go back to this front panel. The front panel will start here and we'll take our power supply. We'll plug it in. We plug it into the front. And so now we're going to want to turn it on. And if we turn it on, we see we only get a couple bars over here to the left. That means it's good. If it wasn't good, uh, we wouldn't get any bars or we would get solid bars all the way across. But when we get two or three bars here at the beginning, that means that it's pretty much good. Okay, so now that we know this front panel is good, now we have to plug it in to our main circuit board. And to do this, you have to be very careful if you have the electronics out to get the correct orientation. So the correct orientation on this is actually with it looking upside down when we plug it in here to our main board. In our main board, we have to be real careful that we don't plug it in one row too low or one row too high but it has to be just right where we get both rows on the edge of the ribbon cable so we get a full connection. So if we look here, what I'm talking about is that we get it fully engaged. See, you don't have one row off. We don't have it one row off this way this way, this way, or this way. So it, this is very important that we get that connection right. Okay, so now that we have it all plugged in, so now what we wanna do is turn it on again, so we wanna cycle it again. So now that we're cycling it, we, we're good again. So now we got three bars over here. And again, if it was bad, we would get a full load of bars over here. That would mean like, that we have a bad capacitor, which uh, is this capacitor, which has already been replaced. Sometimes these capacitors, if they don't burn the top of them off like a match head, they can still be bad because they can be short circuited. And then that would cause these bars to go all the way across. So now, this checks out that so far we got this board good and now our main CPU is good. So now let's turn it off again and we'll add one more part to the circuit here or to the chain. So now we have the RA board that we wanna put on. So now the RA board, if we look at this connector, we wanna make sure that the red wire is closest to the big ribbon cable. So let's put this one on. Okay, so we got that on. And now we go through the same process again. We cycle it on. We don't have uh, very many boards. We do have a couple boards going, or a couple bars going because the motor is turning. And that should turn one direction 
for a little bit and then it should stop and turn the other direction and that's cycling through and that's what we call the initiation process that goes through on uh, that starts on the RA drive and so it should start and we shouldn't have a runaway going at this time and again if there was a bad capacitor on this board one one way we could see it is it would be all the bars would be lit and another way if it was burnt and it was open then uh, we might not have anything we might have a runaway with this board or this motor so now we have the front front board the main cpu and the ra motor and these all seem to be good at this point so now we'll turn it back off and now what we want to add to it is we want to add the hand paddle or hand box whatever you prefer to call it and we'll connect this again we plug it in where it says the keypad okay so she's plugged in I recommend that if you haven't at this point is to replace uh, the capacitor in the hand controller and make sure you change it in this one before you do any other testing with it because this could burn out at any time and if it does burn it could possibly burn your rip the back of your um, board here or your ribbon cable and then that would mean you'd have to get replace this whole front push button panel so anyways now um, I have already changed that capacitor and so now we're going to test the keypad and it's going to test the rest of the electronics so far so again we cycle this on and you can hear it beep now and if you watch we got the mead and then this is going one way and then the other and then once it stops we should get it showing the next window on our interface here and there we got it so now that means that this keypad's good the front panel's good the main cpu so far is good and the motor here is good but now let's take it a step further while we're at it here and we'll check since this is the re motor that we have plugged in we'll check to make sure that it's going the west direction and the east direction which we can see that it is doing so that means we're doing good right now so our next process is let's turn this off again and let's bring in the deck motor now the deck motor we'll leave that over here what we have to pay special attention to here is that this will plug directly into here but that's not correct because this is a special type of cable it's called a crossover connection so you actually need the coiled cord to be plugged into this also so what we can do is plug one in and into our front panel here and then since these two are both uh, male connectors we have to figure out a way to plug these together now you can get a regular coupling uh, you can get that from like an electronics store and it would be uh, an eight pin coupling or you can get it you know from telephone uh, supplies or whatever but you also have this in your fork arm so what you would want to have if you don't have an extra one like I have you would take this and plug it in your you would take your cord and then have it plugged into your 
okay this one would be plugged into the back it doesn't matter which end plugs where but i'm just pretending like this is your fork so this would be plugged in on the back side of your fork or the center part of your fork and then this would go into the front of the fork now you have the correct orientation this cable here is not straight through so that's why you can't use this plug directly into your front hand controller so now that we have that we'll turn this back on and again we got this cycling through and we got this cycling through and there so this is telling us that uh, all these parts are good so at this point if you haven't changed your capacitors and it's one capacitor in the hand or keypad one capacitor on this one capacitor on your main board one capacitor on your deck drive and one capacitor on your RA drive so there's a total of five capacitors that need to be changed and this is good to go other than uh, it would be a, a tune-up on the drives to um, check your pots I'll go through that in another video so I hope this helped you uh, with how to troubleshoot your electronics to know what part is giving you problems and again it's just a step-by-step -step approach and I hope this helps all right see you on the next one